Hey guys, this is Eric Weingunner with Weingunner Racing. Today's video deals with this question you might have asked yourself before. If you have a dual plane intake on a big block Chevy that's made for a 4150 carburetor, if you put a Dominator carburetor on it, will it make more power? Well, I dyno tested that and I've got the results. So all the results, in case you're wondering where, where I'm showing you from, this is a book that's available on my online store. I'll put a link in the description. So if you're having a hard time seeing some of these dyno charts that I'm gonna show you in the video, you can purchase this book. It is available, it's already out in print. So there's a few there. You can purchase all of it. It's got more than just this test in it, by the way. It's got a whole bunch of different tests on the 496, which is what we're talking about today. Also, uh, several tests on the 540 big block Chevy engine, my other dyno mule. This one is actually uh, Nick's from DZ Performance. But let's talk about this test because it's, it's interesting. Now, some of you might already be saying, wait a minute, I've been a subscriber of your channel. Didn't you already do this? Haven't you already put a Dominator on a dual plane before? Yes, on a small block Chevy. But as with testing and science goes, if you can't get it to repeat, it's not necessarily a valid test. So I wanted to try it again on a different combination. This is this combination. It was a 496 big block Chevy. It's probably one of the more common things you'll see. It's got about 10.8 compression ratio. Um, it has a hydraulic roller cam, 243, 247, uh, 110 lobe separation, 630 lift. Pretty basic combination. Now these carburetors here are used for demonstration purposes, but the carburetor that was used, it was 4150, was actually one from Pro Systems, and it was a 4150 style, but it was 1050 CFM. The dominator that was used, again, this is just for demonstration purposes, the one that was actually used for the dyno test was a Holley 1050 as well, but it was the Holley Sportsman um, Dominator. It's the cheapest Dominator pretty much you can get. It's actually cheaper even than this version. Um, so anyway, both of them had the same CFM rating, just one being a 1050 that was a 4150 style, and the other one being a Dominator's like I've got shown here. The intake that was used was an Elderbrock Performer RPM air gap, just like the one that's used here for the demonstration. Very common, probably the most common dual plane you're gonna see uh, is very popular. We have done, Nick and I have done many dyno tests with the manifold, by the way, the, the dual planes. And we tested a bunch, a bunch. Pretty much if you name it, we tested it. And we tested them on different cylinder heads too. And the Edelbrock Performer RPM Air Gap is the best that we've tested so far. So anyway, what happened was the heads that were on it were a Trick Flow 280 head. And they were completely out of the box. Trick Flow had sent me a set to do some testing on. I thought, well, you know what? Let's go revisit this test here. Because my curiosity had me peaked. Because when it was on the small block Chevy and I put the Dominator on it, it gave it the most torque down low and the most peak torque that that motor had ever seen. Now, up at the higher RPMs, it didn't do as quite as well as a single plane, obviously, because it was on a dual plane. But it had the most torque, especially down low, than anything. Any of the other manifolds tested, period, at that time. So I was curious to see if it would repeat. So the carburetor did have, so when it was 4150 on, was on there, just like the, what I have set up here, we used a uh, one inch open spacer. And this happens to be a uh, phenolic, but I think we used a wood one. And it was just an open spacer, just pretty much generic. Um, no fancy four hole thing, no dimples, no nothing else. Just a generic four hole. You might say, why? We have tested different spacers before and that one's been really, really good. Now on the dominator side, that's where it gets tricky. This one is an adapter and it's from HVH. But if you look, it's a four hole taper deal. This spacer, and I don't mind saying it, has been the only spacer that every time I have put it on something with a dominator, it has picked up power. Single plane, don't matter. Dual plane, so far doesn't matter. Small engine, big engine, does not matter. This thing, this spacer always picks up power and I'm talking at least 10. So. That's the spacer was used. The carburetor, like I already said, was the same. So there's your rundown. Same size carburetor as far as CFM that's advertised, just 4150 versus 1050. Now let's look at the results. Again, these are all in the book. Feel free to purchase them from an online store. You purchasing them helps with the uh, doing more dyno tests, but we'll just get to it. We'll show you the raw numbers first in an overlay. So here we have the numbers. Now we pulled it all the way down to 3,700 RPM. We probably could have pulled a little bit lower, but at this much torque, it's really hard for the dyno to make such a large sweep. Um, but anyway, if you look at 3,700 RPM, 
And this is with the 4150 carburetor, as you pointed out first. So this is 4150, open spacer, trick flow 280 heads, air gap intake. The heads and intake completely stock. They weren't port matched or nothing. Um, 613 foot-pounds of torque at 3,700 RPM. So that's when it's rolling in. So even as it is, this thing is no slouch. It's definitely making some, making some beans. And if you look at the torque, peak torque goes all the way to 627 and does it at 4,800 RPM. But again, this was the 1050 carburetor, uh, 4,150 style. Peak horsepower came in at a whopping 643 at 5,900 RPM. So not bad. Not bad at all. No complaints there. Now, the Dominator goes on. So no other changes were made, just the Dominator. Oops, went a little bit too far. Here we go. It went from 613 to this rolling in at 618. And I think we're off by 100 RPM, so let me make sure it compares. Sorry, 3,800 RPM, we had 608 versus 618. It's up. 10 foot pounds of torque. Don't worry, once you see the overlay, you're like, oh my gosh, that's a huge difference. Now look at the peak torque though. We're now 652 foot pounds of torque from 630. It's up considerably. Look at the horsepower. Remember we were peaking at 59 before? We're now peak at 6,000 at 665. Like, well, that's raw numbers. That's, I can't understand that. I can hardly see it on my screen. I'm gonna watch it. I don't wanna watch an ad, so I'm watching this little bit of thing. Remember, you purchased the books. The overlay is gonna show it. This is the overlay. The red lines, the 4150. The black lines, the Dominator. On a dual plane. Nowhere, not down low, not at the peak, does the 4150 ever better. On a dual plane. It's, it's pretty unusual. So, yeah. And I mean, it's not even a little, it's not like, oh, it was close. Peak torque went from 627 to 652. I mean, that's more than 20 foot pounds. Horsepower, 643 to 665. Again, um, you know, more than 20 horsepower. Dominator with that HVH. Now, one of the questions that maybe asked, had, did you try it with an open spacer adapter to do the Dominator? In other words, instead of using this fancy HVH one, have you tried an open? I'd have it on a dual plane. On a single plane we did before and the HVH made the difference. So that spacer with that carburetor is magic. Now, one of the things you may be saying, well then I wanna know how it drives on the street. Me too. So driving on the dyno is totally different because you're just wide open throttle. You're not in between or part throttle. I don't have an answer for how that responds that way. What I do know is when you mat it all the way down, it's making more torque and horsepower everywhere. Everywhere. What I don't know is, how does it drive? Don't know. So one of the things eventually I'm gonna try doing is, maybe I'll try this, is go out to my track that's local here. Um, we have Tulsa Raceway Parks, my local drag strip, and see if I can't get a guy to put one on if he's got a dual plane. Maybe I'll bring my carburetor and the spacer, and if he's got enough hood clamps, we'll give it a shot. Maybe I could talk someone into doing it. And we'll do an A, B, and see how much faster it is, and see how it is driving back on the return road, and see what he thinks, or her, I don't know. But I, I am curious to see if it actually does drive better because this says you're going faster on the drag strip. If you go slower with more torque and horsepower like this, something's wrong with you or some other issue going on with the car. But that doesn't, that doesn't do anything with drivability. So I would like to know the answer on that one. So maybe eventually we're gonna find out. But if you're just like, man, I don't know what to pick, there's, there's a pretty good deal. Now, granted, you're going to have to have hood clamps because that spacer is one inch. This is one and a half inch. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, I thought you guys might get a kick out of this. This is the second time. It's looking like it's confirmed. My next goal is to find, and which I think we're going to do, uh, a little circle track engine. So you got a little 350 small block. They're only going to make like 365 horsepower. That engine was maybe 385. You're like, oh, small blocks don't make much power. That's because it's really, really, really restricted on rules. Like hydraulic flat tap at 450 lift, as opposed to like 20 inches of vacuum at idle, stock cast iron intake, stock cast iron heads. They just don't make a ton of power because of their rules. I think that's actually on a two barrel too. So we're gonna try to see, I want to eventually do that and put a dominator on that one just to see, because it's so much CFM more than what it needs. And just to kind of verify it, that'd be like the final test. Because then we would have gone to um, a smaller extreme. 
But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. Please buy the book so I can do more dyno testing to show you. There are more dyno tests in here. There'll eventually be videos. Remember, I'm no Superman. I don't pour cast iron heads. You guys take care.